you guys have cell phones, we'll just... Uh, oh yeah, airplane mode, right? Yeah, airplane modem or whatever works for you. Just because we get a little bit of interference. I'm about to have like a million text messages from a bunch of girls when I turn <laughs> no. back on. Oh no, my million text messages <laughs> from a bunch of girls. Gonna have to put them on airplane mode. <laughs> oh god. All right, what's up everybody? My name's Clayton Filipovich and I'm joined by... Gus Light. And... Isaac Ibarra. And real quick, uh, if you guys don't know Isaac Ibarra, I know you know Gus from last episode, but Isaac Ibarra yeah. is a public affairs Marine out of Okinawa. He's currently in Maryland at the moment. So if you'd like to stalk and kill him, you can find him there. Um, <laughs> if you guys are interested in any of his awesome photographs, I'll throw a couple of them up on the screen right now. And if you want to, you can follow him on Instagram at Isaac Ibarra1. And I'll put that also in the video description. So to kick off our podcast today, I know it's been a minute since we've been back here. We've been trying real hard to get uh, Mr. Tyler Main here, but it's just been conflicting schedules. So uh, that's no big deal, but we're here. We're here on a Sunday night in an undisclosed location in a Russian satellite combat <laughs> or compound. I should say. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have Gus kick off our first topic. Gus, what are we talking about? Uh, freemium games. Freemium games? Yes, which is like pretty much a like game of war or any game you can get for free that makes you buy stuff to continue to play the game pretty much. Okay. Like Candy Crush, I think Candy Crush is the same way. I've never played Candy Crush. Game of War I thought was really lame and didn't play it. Clash of Clans. <clears throat> Clash of Clans, I don't know. If, yeah, they probably do mm -hmm. it because all of them do it. It's like, yeah, because like there's always one resource, like gems or something. You can get coins, mm -hmm. but coins don't buy shit. Right. And gems is what you need. And then it's this like, is Clash of Clans, right? There are, yeah, well, it's, this is like a generic thing. There's okay. always like one resource in these games that you can't earn easily by playing it mm -hmm. and it's like oh get 100 100 gems for 5.99 miranda's mom is constantly sending me stuff to like uh farmville is that what i'm talking <laughs> about right now um i don't think so i'm talking more about like game of war i think is like the best example because i know like some kid like he spent a, like it was like 50 like thousand dollars like his, his like grandpa's credit card oh, no. and he was just he was just like buying like extra gold and stuff his civilization was probably dope but like fifty thousand dollars on a game that was free. Okay, so okay, well like, then answer I mean, me this: How is it free then, or, or who is it? A, I mean, I mean, money rules the world, right? So yes, I'm guessing advertisements. Right. Well, it well if you look at uh, Game of War's advertisement, they had Kate Upton. I mean, she probably right. doesn't come cheap. Mm -hmm. And look at all like the CGI like bullshit that goes on. Right. And like that's high quality stuff. Like their ad campaign is like mul is a multi million dollar ad campaign. Yeah, yeah. They like how up. how do they do that with the game that's free? How do they make money? What they do is they have a game that, like, they stop you from playing it at some point. Like, as I'm playing one called Dungeon Gems, which I have not put any extra money into, and it's still, I'm still having a pretty good time. I don't have to pay money to keep playing it, but it gives you, like, a life meter. Candy Crush is the same thing. So when you run out of life, you can't play anymore. So it gives you the game that's pretty fun and addictive just because that's how usually the games are, but it only gives it to you in small doses. Because if you were to drink, like... <clears throat> soda all the time, eventually your brain receptors, dopamine and endorphins and stuff like that, they'll turn off and drinking that soda will give you the same type of pleasure. So, so if you it's play like the, a if crack play, dealer then. Pretty much. He'll like, sprinkle a little bit to you for free. <laughs> first time, hey, the first time's free. And then you're like, great, I'm hooked. Not that I would know anything about crack, but <laughs> I assume, wink, wink, I'm just kidding. I really don't do crack, but I assume that a crack dealer would be like, all right, first time's free, second time's free, third time. All right, here's my house. Yeah, then, yeah, that's exactly what they do is they give it to you in small doses, of something that's addictive, and then to keep continue playing the game and to like get better at it, they like use like oh here's five dollars, and then all oh, five dollars I'll buy some more gems, and then <laughs> unlock some more heroes, and then I'll go play, and oh well you know well, what was ten dollars, right. and then you spend fifty dollars on a game eventually. It was throughout the course of maybe maybe it's the course of a couple of months, so maybe you don't really notice that much out of your bank account. Mm -hmm. But still, that's fifty bucks you just sank into a stupid game on your phone. That's free. So, when to clear this up, it is on your phone. It's not like well, I mean, they do like some. There's some PC games that they that's like they play to win. Right. Is obviously it's like free. Like the game's like free to play. Like I think uh, Hearthstone. Like a lot of people kind of uh, shit on that game. It's like it's like Magic the Gathering, except a little more simple. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of fun to play. But once you get to a certain point. Like, your ass is getting reamed <laughs> by, by even, like, the, like the computer. Like, you get to a point where you just cannot win. Right. And then playing anyone online, they pay to get better cards. 
Sure. And then you're here with the, the free cards you get, and then you're just getting, you know, you're just getting beat. And when you're losing, do you have fun losing a game, even if the game is fun? Obviously not. Mm -hmm. So you stop playing, or you buy Are you, the freaking mm -hmm. stuff, yeah, and then yeah. you pay to win. That's well, here's a, something interesting that I read the other day. Uh, I think it was by IGN. <clears throat> and it was an article about how cell phone graphics have surpassed Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 graphics. But not yet have they surpassed that of Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Probably because of the 60 frames per second frame rate. I don't know. That's what I'm guessing. So do you think that the advancements in like graphics for cell phones, has that helped? Or, or could you do this with like Tetris and make it a crap? Like, oh, I mean, Candy Crush is one of those examples. Uh -huh. And that's pretty much bejeweled. Which is like you slide some stuff around on a screen. Like you don't need to be a you know, rocket surgeon to program that game. Obviously I don't have that type of skill, but right. you're not making like an, you're not making like Skyrim or Fallout Four on your phone to get money. Right. So then what what is making it so obsessive or addictive to play these games on your phone? Right? Like what's the well, what's it's, the... it's it's because it's well if the, if you don't find the game fun, you don't find the game fun. Mm -hmm. So like, they're kind of, I guess, taking a risk in that perspective. If the game isn't fun, no one's going to play it. But if they take, like, a pretty basic thing, because, like, Game of War is pretty much like Age of Empires, which is a pretty common game that, like, people used to like. Mm -hmm. And you can't really, they don't they don't really make new Age of Empire games anymore. Except I think they remastered the second one on Steam or something like that, but that was about it. So they take something that a lot of people like, dumb it down a little bit, and then if you want more of it, you have to pay to get it. Really? Yeah. Hmm. And like it's it's those doses that that it limits how much you can play at a time that make you want to go back for more. So like you get and then constantly sends you uh, notifications. To I actually just got one from one of my mobile games. That like oh your energy's full, so now I can play the game again. Have you played Ark yet? Ark I have not. Okay, so like it's kind of like re reminding me of Ark where I've kind of dropped off playing Ark, but it was oh god I just burped I'm sorry. Guys, I'm sipping on some really bad PBR right now, <laughs> so you have to excuse me. I'm basically yeah, I was, I was burping on that last one too. I was trying to contain it. <laughs> so uh, I was playing Ark, and it's, it kind of feels like okay. Here's here's something else. Tangent on a tangent. You remember those video games in the '90s? It wasn't even a video game. It was like the small little egg that you had. It was like on a like keychain. Tamagotchi. Yeah, yeah. and oh, it would die yes, if you didn't yes. like tend to it. Mm -hmm. So. Like, those were addictive, man. If I had money back when I was, like, five years old, six years old, <laughs> I'd be broke. I'd be a broke-ass right now because I would spend all my money trying to keep that thing alive. So I feel like that's kind of, like, it's nothing new. They're just... It's uh, evolving. It's just mm -hmm. evolving. Yeah, there's, like, the most of my information that I got is from Game Theory, which is a really cool channel. And he, he talks about how, like, why, why they are so addictive and how can they even make money if it's a free game. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much everything I just said I got from uh, that, that channel, which is a really cool channel. So then here's the thing. Isaac, I'm going to throw it over to you real quick. Do you think that it's a good thing or a bad thing as to how, I don't want to say addictive, but entertaining these video games are? I think uh, it's a good thing that it's entertaining, but if it gets to the point where it's addicting, I just don't think that's a very good thing. Just because, I mean, I can't relate to the fact that they're addicting because I, I can't get addicted to those games for some reason. I'm just not the type of person that can play for hours on a game on a phone. But I think, especially for the little kids now, it's easy for them to get addicted to these games, yes. and that, and I think that's bad because I was one of like the few generations that just like stopped, like didn't play with like iPhones. Kids now nowadays have like iPads and stuff like that, and I think I think that's dangerous when little kids start getting get a hold of these games. See, that's interesting because Miranda's kindergarten class they operate on iPads, so they'll come like they in. Learn on iPads? They all have iPads, and in the morning they'll just do their math lesson on the iPad. Like in silence, iPads? each one's got an iPad. The, from the school. From the school. No way. Five-year-olds. And they are just like straight up minority report. They're just like... Of course. <laughs> and they're just like doing oh math on God. these iPads. Five-year-olds, man. In fact, I've got a cousin. And this is a couple years ago even. I was like, hey, what's up? How are you? And she's like tapping on her... She's like seven. And she's like tapping on her iPhone. I'm like, whoa, you have an iPhone? Like, I don't even have an iPhone. She's like, <laughs> yeah, it sucks. I don't even have the new iPad. I'm like, wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's definitely something like our generation is a lot different. Because like we, we're like in that really weird spot that like all that technology had existed. Like right. cell phones existed when we were kids. Right. But they were kind of crappy Nokia's. and super expensive. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and like we were, we were born in that like time frame where that technology like like while we were growing up it was there mm -hmm. but then it took a leap <clears throat> yep and then like it just like 
now it's so common. Like, and, I mean, but we're, but we sound adopted. like the people right like, back in my day. <laughs> it's like we're 21 years old. <laughs> exactly. it's, just, it's just crazy that the, what the, okay, so the gap between, let's say like the 13 year olds today mm-hmm. compared to our 13 year old experience is like insanely different. It's pretty, pretty much, it's, it's different, but it's the same. Cause like, I didn't have, I, I didn't have a phone until I was 16. Cause like that was like the age where I got my phone because I could have a car then too. Right. Because then I could actually like go hang out with my friends and need a phone to call my parents for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. So that was the only reason I got a phone. And then, like I remember like being a kid and like wanting like the Game Boy and like mm-hmm. the Game Boy probably like is stupid low on the technology scale <laughs> yeah. from what it has <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. And that thing was probably like three hundred bucks. Right. Yeah, it's insane. And now like my phone is like can do more than an Xbox 360 and is probably cheaper. Well, okay, well then how does this, how do you think this will affect like Marine Corps recruiting standards and processes and things now that this generation has moved onto like digital platforms? Like I've seen the Marines on um, obviously like NFL Network, but there's also a site called Game Battles and Major League Gaming, which is really popular on Xbox and PlayStation. And they've got Marine Corps ads plastered. I'm like, the Marine Corps is like, putting ads on these websites that nobody, I, I, I don't know, like, I don't know what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say is Marine Corps Recruiting Command has a really good pulse right now as to where the young guys are, mm-hmm. and I think that the bad news to that is, if you're targeting gamers, like, I joined the Marine Corps probably a little bit in part of my gaming, <laughs> like, I'm not even gonna lie, like, my, like, my dad is always, like, associating my video game playing with why I joined the Marine Corps, I'm like, no, <laughs> but in the back of my head, I'm like, yeah, maybe, <laughs> and that's interesting to me, because, like, that's a little scary, like, on the one hand, you have all these, like, kids that are, like, lethargic and really fat, and, mm-hmm. and that's what I was, but I saw Marine Corps ads, and I lost a bunch of weight, and, I mean, that wasn't the only reason I joined the Marine Corps, but it was, it helped. So I don't know. I feel like that's kind of crazy. Like Marine Corps can just recruit gamers. Is that a good idea? Well, I mean, they've been doing that for a little while now. Cause I like, I know like uh, the army had their own video game too. Really? Like that was, it was a recruiting tool. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. It was like for the, like for the original Xbox. And then like, it was like, it was a lot more realistic than some of the other games or something like that. But like, it wasn't. Really Do you mop the floors game. and just bitch about your life all the time? <laughs> 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 that would that'd make it really realistic. Though. Really realistic <laughs> game. I just bet it's really disappointing for them because they expect to be doing all that stuff. And then they join and it's just like a few days. Well, I'll tell all you right. what. Okay. So I, okay. Segway real quick. So I have the YouTube channel that like, I talk to like new recruits and pulleys and young Marines and stuff like that. And people are trying to join the Marine Corps. And nine times out of ten on my on the comment section, like the comments are constructive and kids and guys are like, all right, cool, thank you. Uh, but then I get the ones that like just the other day I got a notification on my phone and this and I said, No, you can't live like you have to live in the barracks as like mm-hmm. an E one, E two, whatever. And this kid's like, My my cousin is a Marine and he told me that I don't have to live in the barracks and I'm like, Well your cousin is a piece of shit. <laughs> and he probably got married yeah. and didn't tell you. And like these and I feel bad for them because I've had people I've had an equal number of people join the Marine Corps and message me later and be like, Thank you, you're an inspiration, I lost all this weight, mm-hmm. I'm doing good in the Marines, I got my stood up on my feet financially, great. And then I'm like the very select few, like maybe like two percenters will message me and be like Fuck you, man. <laughs> this is shit that got me in the Marine Corps. I'm in this mess because yeah. of I'm like, I never told you to join. I told you yeah. exactly how it yeah. is. And you guys listen to other commenters. So, but to add to that, so my topic kind of segueing here is on the same like platform kind of. It's it's about live stream gaming, like Twitch and stuff like that. But YouTube. That's, yeah, it? that's a, that's a huge thing actually. Yeah. I remember a little while ago, YouTube like had their own section for gamers. They it rolled like, it out like a year it's, ago. It's such a huge thing. Yeah. Like, I definitely am one of the people who, as much as I love to play video games and stuff like that, mm-hmm. I can't do it because, like, sure, I guess, like, you can compare it to, like, oh, people watch, like, I can't even watch football. Like, really, besides, like, if I watch football, it better be, like, the Super Bowl and it better be a bunch of my friends around right. as, like, a social experience. But I can't sit down by myself and watch football because I'm, like... I'd rather be hanging out with my friends playing football. Well, here's oh, and that's, not, but that's I'm, I'm our the generation. Inter- so here's I'm losing the thing: the interact. Yeah, it's another thing. There's, there's another South Park episode about this. I mean, we're pretty much talking <laughs> about talking about. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I haven't seen. Okay. Of South Park is so, newer season. It talks about how like everyone 
doesn't understand the new generation right. of like YouTubers and how they all they do is play video games. And, like they're like, what? Like all he's doing is playing a video game. Wouldn't you like rather play the video game? Well, listen, this. I, I got I got to tell you about this yeah. because I got a capture card. It's called an Elgato, and I did this whole nerdy thing where I hooked up mics to myself, <laughs> and flowing into my computer, and Monday through Thursday around 8:30, 8:45 p.m. Eastern, I stream Call of Duty. I'll stream Rainbow Six Vegas. Just like just play, and I'll and I'll talk to them. And since I've done that. My subscriber rate has gone up like a hundred percent. Like I, really? and, yeah, in like two weeks, I ended up getting like five hundred more subscribers. I set up a PO box on Fort Meade where they can send me donations. Mm-hmm. I think they, like some, some of them will like, all right, I want to buy you a new mic. Here's ninety dollars. I want. Are you serious? Yes. You've got, you've got. Yes. Money. Yes. I, and I here's, do here's know that. More. That's crazy. There's more though too. In the PO box, I've had people like they send me like candy notes. They'll send me notes from boot camp. So kids will go to, will see my YouTube, go to boot camp, and then they'll send me letters from boot camp, and I'll reply to them. And on top of that, uh, it, 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 I had a Gears of the newest Gears of War Ultimate Edition donated to me, and I and then they donated the game to me, and then I play it, and then they watch me play it. Now here's the thing, here's the thing, and for us, we're sitting here like baffled, like what is going on? But for this demographic, and and really, I would say it's a demographic between 12 years old to around 20, 21 years old. Not to say that there's not outliers, but that's a general thing. And I've read up on it, and a lot of like popular websites have said that by watching somebody play video games and get kills and stuff like that, and, and or succeed at the objective, like without doing any manual labor themselves, the viewer feels like they're accomplishing something. It's almost mm-hmm. like a drug. Like endorphins are being released <laughs> uh-huh. in the back of their head, and they're like they don't know it, but like they are feeling a sense of accomplishment. And on top of that, I believe it's a little bit more personal. Because in the YouTube, and I, I stream through YouTube gaming. I, I, I said, I ditched Twitch. I'm like, cool, Twitch is already established. I can't get any followers. I've got almost 8,000 followers on YouTube. And on any given night, I'll have 40 or 50 people watching me stream, just playing, talking to my friends, talking to them. It's crazy. Like, it's just crazy. That is insane. Yeah. Like, even because, like, it's, it's so hard to, like, get into YouTube stuff, too. Like... I can't like if if you search the video I made, you can't even find it. Right. You have to you'd have to search my thing because the way the algorithm is set up. But the fact right. that you have people like giving you stuff. Yeah. Like giving you a game. <laughs> well, like donating like, because like they'll tune in. Like I've got it. I've got a set schedule I play, uh, so they never have to ask when you're you so cool. Like I just want to. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not even making funny right no. now. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. Like I oh I, I figured I said you know what I'm gonna try it and then I'm actually gonna do a speech on this later uh, down the line for a couple of gov- for a government. Uh, speaking engagement and basically how can we use YouTube live streaming in the government so I've practiced on my own personal time right Mm -hmm. and analytics have been up comments have been up subscribers have been up donations have been up how can we apply that to like the business end of things and what we're gonna do next week here is we're gonna be streaming uh, something for the Air Force over over our YouTube page live streaming through YouTube and if you think about it it's genius because it gives a notification to your subscribers that you're on Mm -hmm. and they can come in and then they can live chat Mm-hmm. And before, it's like, it, it just adds a new dynamic of like personal, like communication, right? Mm-hmm. So I thought that's pretty interesting. I don't know. Isaac, what do you think about all that? My right, technology's too crazy these days. I can't, <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't even keep up. Like, that's insane. And I just, I, I'm, I don't even know like what to say. The fact that you're getting donations, I'm still kind of like in awe about that. Yeah, I can't wrap my head I can't, I can't, I can't well, believe it. And I, and I couldn't believe it either until they started saying like, hey, where's your like, PayPal button? Yeah, because I know like, Jessica Negri gets donations because she has huge boobs. <laughs> well, so do I, up. but, you know, they <laughs> tell me to put my shirt back on. So, but, like, but by the way, all the donations, like, I don't use them to, like, pay my bills. Like, I've genuinely gone into, like, making the stream better, uh, upping my internet connection. I've um, trying to purchase better mic equipment. So, that, like, the, the mic I want to buy is called a Blue. I don't know if you guys are, are audio aficionados, but... Basically, it's just like high quality, like no fuzz in the background. Just, and, and it just makes the experience better for them. And like one of my friends compared it to being like a street performer. Like they're basically, they're, they're donating towards their entertainment. Right. It's really interesting. Yeah, that's, that's the uh, going back into YouTube because YouTube Red is the mm-hmm. new like subscription based YouTube channel, which a lot of people like, I think people that are like talking shit against it are definitely, I don't want to say they're wrong, because there is the still the free side of YouTube, mm-hmm. but if you want to get better content from these creators who are taking their time and money and effort yep. into their projects they're making to entertain you, like they should get paid. Obviously, if they want and if their content is 
of quality, they need more money to keep up that quality. Exactly. So obviously they have to have some type of revenue. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, no, so. somebody somebody messaged me on my YouTube, not message, but in the comment section of my live stream, they said, don't you have a job? And I'm like, yeah, I have a job. And like, so why are you asking for donations? I'm like, if you worked like four hours a night to entertain people, wouldn't you kind of want to be compensated for it? And I'm, even still, I tell them like, it's not going towards my water bill or my mm -hmm. electricity. It's like going back into the stream to make it more engaging. So I just think that was like really an interesting aspect of this whole thing. And and to get it all up and running, all all you need is like uh, a MacBook will do, um, a cheap little fifteen dollar mic off of Amazon, and the Elgato capture card, which is like one hundred and forty bucks. I'm not sponsored by Elgato. Elgato. I was about to say it. <laughs> yeah, Elgato, say, okay, the <laughs> the high stream, high quality HT. <laughs> Go buy it now. No. <laughs> Lightning fast. <laughs> so, but anyway, unless you guys have anything else on that topic, I just thought that was like super interesting. No, I, I just think like YouTube is like an incredible way for people to project their talents mm -hmm. like because i mean so many musical artists have gone up through youtube i mean little dicky he's one we've been dude oh, yeah. he's hysterical have you seen the one his one music video is like a something about that money it's like saving oh, that, 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 that money like Whoa, that, oh, that, that, that's, our, that's, our, that's, our, that's our theme song right <laughs> yes. now but like i mean if you watch like his early stuff it's it's like pretty much the same quality like it's pretty good quality for like some of his first music videos mm -hmm. even though some of them are just him like behind a mic at his house right. rapping but like, like even his early music videos are really good. But he didn't like he did that like as a side thing. Mm -hmm. And now he has his own album that is like an actual thing you can buy on iTunes, and it has like it's not yeah. just like a little thing like oh by the way I made an album you can right. buy on iTunes. No, that's his job now. Yeah, like right. his his album's called Professional Rapper. Yeah. <laughs> like he like went from being like this YouTube guy who like kind of had like a side passion for doing rap music, and now he is a rapper. He's touring. He's touring. Yeah. Like that's awesome, and that was just that's the power of the internet. And there's a stories of yeah. well, power of YouTube. I mean, a lot of people are trying to say, like you said, with YouTube Red, with the donation button that just came to channels, and also you know, there's a new thing called a uh, uh, pay to view. Like you can do like pay per view stuff on on YouTube now. Where like say I have my channel, if I create a video, I can create a playlist and charge people money to view it, which I wouldn't do that right now. Like that's not my interest right now, but. I mean, people, if your content's good enough and it, exactly. it takes a lot of money to produce your content, like, yeah. why not? People don't know how much goes into making videos. Yeah, definitely. Oh, my God. People were like, hey, man, I try to upload at least a video either every day or every other day, and that is stressful. Mm -hmm. and every, every day, yeah, I was about to say. It is hard to do that. And, like, for 30 seconds, for 30, okay, so I worked at the Travel Channel for a little bit, and the standard for 30 seconds of video editing, or, like, on the television, if you watch TV for, like, 30 seconds on TV, that's the equivalent of, like, an hour of editing. Mm -hmm. Between all the special effects and, and the titles and the graphics and the color correcting and the audio, it's just ridiculous and people don't understand that. So, for all you cheapskates out there, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but, Isaac, we're going to segue real quick. I think we're about 22, 23 minutes in. Isaac, what, what topic you bring to the table? You got anything you want to you wanna preach? No, I didn't bring anything. But, right. I will say... Um, I didn't bring anything, though. No. I, <laughs> I will say. <laughs> no, that's cool, though. Okay, so Isaac and I were talking before the podcast started. Isaac, without getting too uh, into your personal life, you said you were from Mexico. However, you moved to Israel, Israel at yes. 10 years old? Yes. All right, so tell uh, me actually, about that. Uh, in, so I was <clears> born <throat> in Mexico, and then when I was 10 months old, we moved to Israel because I'm a Mexican Jew, which is kind of a hard combination to find. So <laughs> a lot of people tell me I'm like the first Mexican Jew they meet. And um, so we moved to Israel and then my mom is an American citizen. So she was like, you know what? I want to give my kids a triple citizenship so that way they could go to the United States if they wanted to. So all of us moved to Texas and then we all got our United States citizenships pretty much. And when I came into the Marine Corps, I was like, you know what? I really want to serve the Israeli Defense Force after I get out. So after I finish off this contract, that's where I'm going next. So real quick question for you. I get this comment all the time and I really don't know how to answer it is, if, how do you join the Marine Corps if you're not a US citizen? Do you know anything about that? I do because I was not a United States citizen when I was coming in. I was a permanent resident. Hmm. And so a lot of job options for me were cut out because if you're, if you're coming in as a permanent resident, a lot of you can't join for a lot of like in a lot of jobs you get like the really crappy ones like 
like cook and stuff like that, supply and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, I don't want to close out my options. So within a span of like, I think like three months, I was like, I need to put in work to get my citizenship. So I put in my citizenship and then I walked into the recruiter's office. I was like, I got it, passport. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, all right, cool. And I really wanted to do, my recruiter was combat camera. So I was like, I want to do something like that because I was really into photography, graphic design, stuff like that. It was closed out. And then he said that public affairs is open, closest thing I'm going to get to combat camera. And I was like, I'll take it. And so I'm glad that I got my citizenship before that. Mm. So, okay, so you, so you either have to get your citizenship or I believe you have to get a green card, right? Is that mm -hmm. a thing? Have you heard of any programs where you remain, in order to gain your citizenship, you work as a, you like you work through your enlistment and then on the other end of your enlistment the bonus is your citizen is that a thing anymore i don't know but service I mean, guarantees citizenship. <laughs> would you like God to know more bless America. No, but a lot of starship people, troopers reference sorry <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people do join in because it is easier to get your citizenship while you're in the marine corps but i don't they do that at boot camp though like they, there's like i remember like people there's like naturalization ceremonies. Like they get their citizenship mm -hmm. going through boot camp and then like halfway through they do a little ceremony, they're American right. citizens right. and then they finish recruit training. Okay, blah, blah, blah. so so what I, my understanding is that there's three options. You can either get your citizenship and then enlist and have no problems there. You can either get a green card and enlist or you can find a way to get, get a deal or whatever between whatever programs they have available to earn your citizenship through your service to the Marine Corps. I feel like that's a three, and that's not official or anything like that, but <laughs> I get so many questions on that, I never know Talk how to Talk to your recruiters, kids. Yes, talk to your recruiters, <laughs> go to marines.com, call your local recruiting station. If you're overseas, uh, definitely just get on marines.com and try calling them, because I get guys from, like, Britain. I'll get people from, like, random countries like Bulgaria, or, like, oh, goodness, I'm going to burp. <laughs> I even had, like, Chinese people, like, just, I just, all from all over. I don't know what to tell them. I'm like, go to your nearest recruiting office. They're like, I'm in Taiwan. I'm like, well, that's... Why? <laughs> I remember um, coming back from, from Nepal, we had one Nepalese person that kept messaging <laughs> our Facebook page, like, really, really trying to get us to help him move to the United States. And we were like, look, we just, we don't... We're not the ones that deal with that, but you can like, call these people. Mm -hmm. And he was like, no, please, you're my father. We were like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, I, oh, yeah, we, 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 we social can't media help you. For, like, a, like, an official Marine Corps page <laughs> is always the best. You get the, you get the weirdest messages, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. weirdest comments. Well, yeah, I, I, so I helped funny. run the, the flagship site, and that was a thing daily that we would get people from everywhere and that question was you can save your responses on the side and kind of just click <laughs> it yeah i felt like a dirt bag but like you have to do it like i'm not gonna I'm not gonna pass up that golden comment yeah. on this, <laughs> this ridiculous <Yeah>. request <laughs> it was, it was, oh, was God. one time we had like someone message us they're like oh can you come to africa and train with us and it was like a Boy Scout group. Yeah, sure. Let me just something. hop on my, <laughs> yeah, like, my, my mule like, and just get on yeah, over there. Yeah, exactly. It was like just the most ridiculous things. Yeah. All right. So, okay. So real quick, what do you guys think about terminal? You've heard of terminal boots, right, Isaac? Is that like the same on... thing as j -Tots? No. No, That's no, it's no. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, like three Marines that, I'm, I don't know their background. Like I remember one time they said they were combat camera. They're LAR. They're, uh, yeah, they're out in uh, they're out in Okan Palms. Oh, well, I know one time they were in Okinawa because the barracks literally looked like they were on Camp Foster. Oh yeah? yeah, and then like the barracks, like inside of them too. It was like straight up. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't, like, I don't know the, their background, but I think they're, I think that their videos are freaking awesome. They're like, they're swearing and stuff in them. Like I remember when I started making videos for the Marine Corps, like I actually had like no crap like Marine Corps lawyers telling me to like take down my videos. Yeah, like, I, I remember <laughs> the surprise. Like some of their actually most of their stuff, like I don't think it's that anti Marine Corps. No, or no. When, like and stuff like that, it's not really giving a bad like interpretation of it it's more no. of like it's the, the truth it's the, it's the it's true interpretation it. and it's also done in a funny way so like it's more of like it's more for people who are actually in the military right like you wouldn't want to look at that and be like oh what's it like to be joining the marine corps when you're like 10 years old <laughs> you don't want to look at that stuff but like us like who are, who are in they we're like we can relate to all that stuff well here's the thing and what i find is like people don't understand the suck of the marine corps like mm -hmm. okay so who who can blame them though because they they see the Marine Corps recruiting commercials. They 
Hear from every yeah. And like that just made me motivated. I want to go re-enlist already. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but like I can't blame them for not knowing because of misinformation. Oh there. yeah, definitely. Like I, I didn't pretty much like the recruiters too. Like they get you ready for boot camp, mm-hmm. exactly. and then like after that, it's like you're. And when, I remember like I joined the Marine Corps, and like after boot camp, I was like, what happens next? Yeah, mm-hmm. like I go to like. TMC or something like <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I heard my journal instructor mention like MCT or something like it was at this moment that Gus yeah. knew he was screwed <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> and then yeah. you know you're overseas in Okinawa well people don't think okay so in the, in the mind of Johnny who's an 11th grader in high school looking to join the Marine Corps they only see graduating high school going through boot camp getting through boot camp and, and that's, that's it. it that was mm-hmm. me that was like right. straight up I'm same here yeah yeah. Did not have absolutely, even like Marines I talked to, I didn't even ask him about yeah. like what it was like after boot camp. I asked him like, uh, my, my uncle, he was in like in the 70s and I was like, oh, like how was boot camp like? And he told me like, oh, all his drill instructors are like crazy Vietnam vets. Yeah. And like, they would like, you know, like hit him and stuff like that back right. in the old court. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's, that's crazy. I, I didn't ask him a single thing about right. like what the fleet was like. I didn't even know like the term, the fleet. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't even know that. Right. I and thought that meant like you were on a boat. We have all this jargon and, and acronyms that nobody knows about. And that's another good acronyms. point. Like Miranda's dad uh, was a, was, this is a little bit different, but he was in the army for 20 years, right? And he got out years ago. <clears throat> and so you'll talk to these motivated veterans, right? And they'll be like, and your, your mom will come up and be like, Johnny, go talk to your Uncle Ricky. He was in the <laughs> Marine Corps back in 1975. And I'll be like, Okay, I was talking about Johnny. He was a refrigeration repairman in 1975, and he was like, "Yeah, devil dog, he was nuts. He'd just punch us in the face and spit on us, and be like, all right, cool.' So I want to join the Marine Corps because that's enticing. And, <laughs> and like this is this big body of misinformation, like, and it's funny, like the biggest uh, shit bags in the Marine Corps that get out tend to be the most motivated ones like a couple years later, like wearing the eight point cover to the YMCA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just feel bad about all the misinformation out there that there is surrounding the Marine Corps. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I guess a little bit like it has to be out there or else why would anybody join? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. like it's definitely worth it. It is worth joining in my opinion, but there's so much bull crap you have to deal with that. Oh, I mean, that comes with any job, but it's, it's just oh, a yeah. different type that like, yeah, it's, that's, that's the thing. I think it's the fact that it's so different because mm-hmm. it's a military branch. Like, it's not like, cause, oh, maybe you had a job before you joined the military and you had to deal with bullshit, your boss, blah, blah, blah. Right. When you get in the military, you know, it's a lot different. We're a war fighting yeah. organization. So the bullshit you have to deal with, you know, it's there for a reason. And you have to put up with it. You can't just, like, quit your job. Yeah, yeah you're no gonna, quitting. You're stuck. <laughs> yeah, you know? you're super stuck. It's, and that part can be hard to deal with for a lot of people. We're a warfighting organization with a PC movement in the government and a lot of disgruntled NCOs and staff NCOs. So you put that in a pot together and you have the Marine Corps. Um, and then a lot of people will message me and be like, you, you'd be surprised. They'd be like, I want to be a grunt. And, but, but they don't know. Mm-hmm. Just, from, just from not knowing, not ignorance or anything like that, just don't know that there are a billion aspects of the marine corps oh yeah when, I, when I joined i was like my recruiter's like what do you want to do i was like i guess i'm gonna kill people yeah. i was right? like well I didn't, I didn't like that i didn't even go in with that mindset like I, obviously like you know as a joke or whatever but like when i went in like i literally didn't know what else there was i was like well because I, I i knew like you know there's probably like refrigerator repair man i really knew there was dumb lame jobs but then i was like so yeah i guess i want to be infantry he's like no look at this book full of jobs and i was like oh that's kind of cool i was looking through them and i saw combat camera and that caught my eye mm-hmm. that's what i am now but, like, a lot of people don't know, like, what we do. Like, there's so many different aspects of jobs that are important, and a lot of them are pretty cool, too. And that's why a lot of people go open contract, too, because they're just like, I don't care. Which is the oh, biggest yeah, everyone, mistake yeah, in yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Like, all the people that comment on my YouTube, they're like, hey, I want open contract. I went to open contract. I'm like, yep. well, see you later, cook. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, and they're like, it's just so dumb. Like, don't get me wrong, and I'm going to get this question when I post this anyway. If you go infantry... Yes, they, they, I guess there's open infantry contract. And then you get to ITB and you get through that. And then they, they tell you, like, all right, pick this job, this job, or this job. That's that. But on the flip side, like, if you want to be, like, straight up, this is ridiculous. I'm just throwing a couple out there. If you want to be a weatherman, you can be a weatherman. You can get that solidified in your contract. If you want to be public affairs, you can be public affairs. If you want to be an air winger and work as a mechanic, you can get that in your contract. But people don't 
realize just how many different jobs there are. Mm -hmm. And on that note, I try to tell people, pick a job that's going to be applicable to you outside of the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And they don't, they're like, look at me like, what? Like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be in the Marine Corps forever. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm love I'll probably it. die in combat in 20 years <laughs> anyway. <so. laughs> it's, it's, and that's the mindset they have because, yeah. and you can't blame them. It's not their fault. It's just misinformation. Yeah, and then going back to what you said about like uh, people like, oh, I want open contract. A lot of people go open contract just so they can get out of here. I think yeah, you said that. Yeah. Um, but that's that's a really big mistake because, like, I mean, you can talk to you walk into a room with ten Marines and you say, why'd you go open co that were open contract? And you say, why'd you go open contract? Oh, I just wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Like, give it a few months. Like, sure. Like some people, obviously, mean, it's different for everybody. Like, if your situation's really bad, then I guess go ahead and get out of there. But if your situation is like okay and like you could live with it for another few months, try to get the job you want. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people make that mistake. Yeah, and then and and, and so infantry is a big topic that gets brought up. <clears throat> the misinformation around what other jobs there are, and then the other thing I get nonstop. There's three things like I questions I get, and they are as as follows: recon. I knew it. <laughs> Marsoc <laughs> and scout sniper. Yep. <laughs> and and uh, the Navy SEAL, right? And Navy what, SEAL, yeah. Like? like, hey, I want to be a Marine. How do I sign up for Navy SEALs? <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know what you guys know about with the, how the MARSOC process works. I know you have somebody, in, you, you have Clay in your shop, right? He's gone MARSOC now? Oh, no, he's not gone yet, but he is going. I know, like, the process is pretty, like, obviously, like, physically, like, the whole training stuff is crazy. But the process for going, at least for him, like, he's he had to put in a package and stuff, and he had to do, like, a physical screening. I think he went down to Quantico. Right. Like, he had to go there for, like, a physical screening, and they passed, obviously. And then he goes for training for, like, two months, and then he comes back mm. to us for, like, a month. And then he goes back for more training. But he can pass all this training. What's crazy about it, he can pass all that training, and they still won't select him. Right. right. So and he's going back to his job. That so what people don't understand is, one, you can't just enlist in the Marine Corps and go straight to Marzog, mm -hmm. right? You can yeah. do that for recon. You can enlist recon, but that's two separate, completely separate things. Mm -hmm. So you have to serve one full enlistment as X, as whatever you choose to do, whatever job you choose to do. You, it can be, and you can be any job. You can be an admin clerk and then go MARSOC. However, you can't just join and be MARSOC. Mm -hmm. And as Gus was saying right there, one of the guys that we know, he, there's a rigorous process that goes through all sorts of testing, physically, mentally, all, very demanding. And it's like it's broken up into like a couple of months segments. So mm -hmm. you'll go get tested, you'll go do their thing with the Marsoc folks, and then you'll come back to your original duty station and keep doing your job. Mm -hmm. like, Which that's actually probably <laughs> part of the test too. Is like yeah. yeah, people get back there like, are they gonna you know actually do the job they're they're supposed to do? Or are they gonna like be like, well, know what, just like screw it, like let me leave the Marine Corps. <laughs> yeah. not, like I need to either be there or like. One place I can't be playing these games, you know. Right, and then I when mean, that's gotta be like that's when that's choice. all said and done, you still might not get selected just based on their opinion. Like you could have passed everything, been a stellar performer, and still not make it on the team, mm -hmm. so to speak. So that's one thing about Marsoc. And then the other thing that happens, I mean, I've had a buddy. He joined straight out of high school. He was a track all star, and now he's recon, and he really enjoys it. And I've spent a lot of time with the recon marines, and they seem to be really cool dudes. They love what they do. They're badasses. They've got a laid back mentality. However, uh, that's something that's not as rigorous as Marsoc. If you are, I'm not kidding, a no kidding stud, you can become recon. But you have to get that written into your contract and all that good stuff. And then, on top, and then the last thing that people talk to me about is sniper. I mean, I don't know anything about I that. don't know anything about sniper. <laughs> I can't even tell you. I can't even fake I actually about do. That. If sniper is part of. Um, Infantry. Okay. So once you go in, because I, I worked with uh, snipers out in um, in Thailand, and it was pretty cool because they're it's a small group. It's a small group of scout snipers, and pretty much you need to go infantry, and pretty much you talk to the scout sniper platoon, and then you're like, hey, I want to be a scout sniper, and they're like, <laughs> all right, we'll see. Because they even asked me, they were like, do you want to be a scout sniper? Because you can <laughs> lat you can lat move to scout sniper. It's kind of like their own MOS. And a lat move is what. And lat move is pretty much when you have your job, but then you move over to another job that you that you a lateral move. Yeah, a lateral movement. <laughs> exactly. And I think you need to be in your original job for at least two years before you do that. Mm -hmm. So, and I think, you probably have to do some stuff. To so like theoretically speaking, your contract too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Theoretically speaking, anybody could be a scout sniper. You just gotta know them. 
is what I got from it because <laughs> I mean, well, yeah. I, well, crap, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Actually, I do. I do know a few. Let me get on Facebook real quick, and I'll go friend one or two. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's the thing. It's uh, see, if you weren't here, I wouldn't have known that. I wouldn't have known that answer. So, it sounds to me like if you guys want recon right off the bat, and you don't want to be disappointed, be and be physically fit. You can you can go ahead and get recon on your contract, and then later down the road. <clears throat> you can lat move as a sniper. Uh, Marsoc, you have to go through all this testing and all this crazy stuff. It's doable, but not in the foreseeable future for any of you guys just joining right now. Uh, some, yeah, that's definitely like yeah, that's, so far out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they, they say that though. Like they ask every day, like, how can I become Marsoc? And I'm just like, uh, I don't <laughs> even know. Pretty hard. I, I, don't I, think, know. I think another important thing about pictures. recon that they should know is that if you come in recon, like straight off the bat from from boot camp and you fail you're it's free game from there as far as what job you get mm-hmm. and but, it's also like super rigorous so like yeah it's not the fact that if you like you can do it mm-hmm. it's like if you get hurt you're like sorry yeah exactly yeah. right yeah i mean <laughs> and I'll, it's harder for for people just i mean obviously coming straight out of boot camp and passing recon but if you come in to the marine corps with like a regular job or whatever job and then you lat move to recon, you can go back to the same job that you had if you fail recon. Right. So that's I think that's important to know because a lot of people go mm-hmm. recon. They're like, oh, I'll just be infantry if I fail. Well, no, oh, not nope. really. <laughs> <laughs> that's not no, the case. Even though, even though you have, don't you have to pass infantry school before? Well, yes. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, yeah, you're an infantryman. Right. But here's the and thing. Then, like Keenan, that mm-hmm. happened to Keenan. So okay, we have a lot of friends, especially Gus and I, when we went through MOS school in particular, that tried out for recon. And these dudes were PT studs, like to the max, like moto- mm-hmm. motivated, great at doing all they could do, all their pull ups, all their put, all their whatever, you know, three mile run, crunches, whatever. No problem. Some of them get hurt, some of them don't pass, some of them just like raise their hand and like, I'm out, I'm done. At that point, like Isaac was saying, whatever MOS you get, you get. You don't just go back to infantry. Like, they'll give you a list if you're lucky, and you'll mm-hmm. get like maybe to pick, but that doesn't always happen. So when I went to MOS school, I think there was probably like anywhere between like probably 10 to 12 dudes in the time I was there that came from recon. And at that point, I mean, some of those dudes do really good work and for public affairs and combat camera. But <clears throat> once you fail recon and that is so demotivating for a lot of people mm-hmm. that they're just like, screw this. I'm just going to get done with this and listen and get out. So that was an interesting uh, aspect also. So before we close out, you guys got anything else you want to add, Gus? Nope. I think there's a good tangent from mobile games all the way to Marsoc. Yeah, we made it. We made it all the way here. Isaac, you got anything you want to add? I'm good. Cool. All right, guys. So I appreciate you all listening and coming and stopping by. Uh, if you Again, if you want to visit Isaac's Instagram, that is at Isaac Ibarra one I'll also put Gus, Gus's Instagram down below. Gus, what's your um, Instagram? My Instagram's dumb. It's oh. Gus underscore Lay, and I don't even post on it that much. All right, if you want to visit... Uh... <laughs> oh, check out my YouTube channel, though, um, which is the same as my PlayStation name, which is Commander underscore Johan. Cool. So I'm what I'll do... just starting to put content on it. Hopefully you guys like it. Do you have a PlayStation or Xbox? No. No? Damn, That's why he wasn't talking much about the game. Man, you yeah. got to get on board, man. <laughs> All right, so what I'll do is in the video description, I'll make sure I put everybody's contact handles for Instagram. No, he, he doesn't have, a, have an Xbox. He's a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Ouch. Well, I didn't, I hey, girlfriends love Xboxes. Let me tell you right now. <laughs> they just love when you spend hours on those and don't pay attention to them. Uh, we'll put everybody's contact information. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and you can follow me at Clayton Philpo on Twitter and Instagram. Again, thank you guys for viewing. We'll see you later. And that's the way it is. And that's, <laughs> and that's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> later, guys. I can see you, yes, I can.